Hello and welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and a very happy Pi Day to you all. Uh, for today is indeed the third month and the 14th day thereof and 3.14 as every school child and watcher of Cracking the Cryptic knows is well ah oh, they are the first three digits of Pi. Um, so to celebrate Pi Day, we have a puzzle with a very peculiar title today. It is called Theorema van Thoen, and it's by Ard van de Wetering, uh, the magnificent constructor from the Netherlands. Uh, Ard, of course, was the man behind the puzzle that's featured in our most popular video, a video that I think has been watched something like 8 million times. So I sincerely hope that he's worked his magic again on this puzzle, which is looking very suspicious to me. It's an extraordinary, well, an extraordinary setup. This yellow line is a palindrome, by the way, um, and there is an anti night constraint as well, but obviously not a lot of given information, although this does look a bit Fistmophelian, um, which is not the theorem of Van Thoen, I don't think, so I don't know what's going on, but we shall see in just a moment when I read you the rules properly. Um, a couple of things to mention today. Firstly, I need to say a big thank you to Pim Schruers. Um, now, Pim, uh, who I think goes under the name of Sir Zenik, on Twitter has composed a beautiful piece of music. Um, now, for some reason, I don't understand. Pim's also uh, sort of overlaid on that music some commentary that I did during my Fistimafel live stream solve a few weeks ago, um, but which Pim says makes it in some way better. I'm not sure it does. I think the music itself is really cool. And uh, I tweeted about it today, and I'm actually gonna have it as the outro to today's video so you you guys can hear it and see what you think of it i i actually really liked it, it remind right yeah, it reminded me a bit of jean-michel jarre um now what else do i need to mention yes if you are a patron of the channel then tomorrow is a big day if you like our crossword content because mark has recorded what sounds like an extraordinary video i do not know how long the video is but I do know that apparently a couple of Friday nights ago, Mark, Mark always has, uh, he does loads and loads of crosswords every Friday night because Friday night is a big day for crossword releases. So I think he's done the New York Times crossword, Matt Gaffney's sort of American meta crossword. Now, some of you will know what that is. It's, um, it's a weekly puzzle. Um, and has the most extraordinary metas you have to find at the end of it, which many of which I view as quite unfair, but that's probably me being unfair to those metas. Um, and also the listener crossword. So Mark has done all three of those puzzles in one video. I think the listener crossword, which is, um, which is the hardest cryptic crossword published in the UK, uh, or certainly the hardest weekly uh, puzzle that's published weekly, um, is a numerical puzzle this week. Normally it's a cryptic crossword, but I think it's a, a numerical that Mark's done in the video. So some of you with a mathsy bent might enjoy looking at that. Uh, and that's all gonna be on Patreon tomorrow. So check it out. Um, now, all that said and done, let's get on with Theorema van Thoen. And I know Ard, Ard van de Wetering is great friends with Ard Thoen. They've written books together. So I don't, I'm guessing that this is a theory or a theorem that Ard Thoen has come up with, but I, 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 might, I might be wrong. Um, but the rules are as follows. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So this six here, if, if this was a chess knight, it could jump to this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell, and that cell, and this cell as well. Um, and it, well, it could jump to these two, but these are in its box already. But none of these blue cells could contain a six because if that if this was a six, why is it on color? If this was a six, these two cells would be a knight's move apart containing the same digit, and that's not allowed in today's puzzle. So don't let that uh, fool you. Now the yellow line is a palindrome and must read the same backwards and forwards. So, um, ah, I was about to make a boo-boo there and put one, two, two, one on the line, which obviously wouldn't work. Let's try one, three, three, one. That's a legitimate way of organizing a palindrome because if we read it from this cell, it reads one, three, three, one. And if we read it from this cell, it reads one, three, three, one. And it must read the same both ways round and it would. Um, now, what else? We've got digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So what that's telling us, actually that's telling us something very interesting about that circle I've just noticed, but let's imagine these squares were one, two, and three. One plus two plus three is 
I managed to mess up another example. I'm choosing another one. I'm going to go 1, 2, and 4 then. 1, 2, and 4. 1 plus 2 plus 4 is 7, and I can put a 7 in there without it being directly below another 7, so that seems more sensible. So just make sure your digits along arrows add up to the digit in that arrow circle, and you'll be good to go. Now, do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And, well... Well, actually, I'm going to start here because I just noticed this. Uh, a six on a three cell arrow is fairly important because what can these two digits be? Well, the least they can be is a one and a two. And that means this arrow, the absolutely m minimum number that it can add up to is nine. And it definitely can't add up to more than nine because you can't put a double digit number into a Sudoku. So I think that must be a nine. This must be a one and a two. Um... Now, what does that mean? I suppose what we should do as well is to note that there's something, all of these arrows going around the Fistenfell ring are three cell arrows. So they must each contain at least one plus two plus three. So each circle around the Fistenfell ring must add up to at least six. And that can't be a six or a nine. And that that can't be a seven or a nine, and that's on the palindrome, right? Hang on, let's just let me just check this one. Um, oh, there's loads going on in this. Actually, it's it's very interesting. So here is a small point which I will need the Fistimafel ring to prove. Uh, I don't know if we're going to need the ring, so I don't want to go through the proof unless we need it. But I'll just I'll just mention it quickly. Obviously, the Fistemafel ring, and if you're new to cracking the cryptic, what I'm about to show you will blow your mind because it blew mine when I first discovered it. I did no, when I first learnt about it, I did not discover this. It was discovered by the mighty constructor Fistemafel. Um, is that these 16 orange cells are exactly the same digits, and this is true for any Sudoku puzzle, as these 16 cells in the corner of the grid. So if you go and find a Sudoku on the back of a newspaper and fill it in, you can tick this off and you will find it is true. These 16 cells here are the same as the blue cells. Isn't that amazing? But what that means in this puzzle, because I have a seven um, in, in one of the two by twos in the corner, I must have a seven in the ring. And I can't, I can, you can never put a seven on a three cell arrow because of course it will the circle will then have to contain a double digit number once you've added one and two to the seven which is the least you could add and that means one of those two digits is a seven now as i say i don't want to major on fist and fell if we aren't going to need it but i'm going to try and remember that one of those digits is a seven because what that means i suppose is that one of these arrows is a one two four combination um now what does that mean I don't know, but the other thing, the other obvious point is this is a 6 or an 8 and it's on the palindrome. So that means this is a 6 or an 8 and these are the same digit. So what we should probably try and do, oh, that's a horrible choice of colour. Green, can I see the yellow? No, I want to choose something where I'll be able to see the the yellow. Yeah, um, yeah, that's okay. So, uh, or maybe blue would be better actually. Yeah, blue's better. Okay, so let's ask where blue goes, maybe in this box. Blue cannot go a knight's move away from itself. Uh, that's as good as that gets, isn't it? That's a bit disappointing. So blue has got to be in one of those three cells in each of boxes two and six, I think. If this was six, it would be one, two, three here. wondering whether there's something going on with ones and twos. The other, the other odd thing about this puzzle is I'm not going to learn very much. But, well, even if I did prove Fistemafel, it's far from clear to me what, you know, there's such, there's absolutely no information <laughs> affecting the corners of this puzzle. You know, it's not like you have a, I don't know, a two here or something where you could at least say something about this none of none of the givens in any way affect the two by twos in the corner apart from that one. Oh, okay yeah so because seven can't be on this arrow seven must be in one of those cells so seven is over there 
which means seven can't go in either of those two cells in box number four, because if you do put a seven in either of them, the knight's move constraint will rule it out of these two cells. Seven, uh, the same logic applies here. So seven is in one of these. Oh, but seven can go in the, in the circle here. So seven is one in one of those three. What about the other digits on the palindrome? We'll make those, maybe I'll make purple. No, actually that yellow set shows up quite well against the purple. So these two digits are the same. Ah, aha, right. Well, that's not blue anymore. That is something we can now say because this digit is purple, I think. By, that's beautiful, actually, it's weird. So those two cells, because they're the same, and there's a knight's move constraint in the puzzle. Look at these three. Could these ever be purple? Well, no, because both of those are a knight's move away from this one. So they're not purple. By Sudoku, these aren't purple. By Sudoku, this isn't purple. And by knight's move Sudo Sudoku, this is not purple because it's a, pur it's a knight's move step away from this cell. So that is purple. And not, oh no, it could be seven probably still, but I don't, it's definitely not blue because blue shares a box with purple and that oh yes and because of symmetry that logic works in box six doesn't it yes look this this cell rules out all those and this one takes care of three of the others and that is also purple so purple oh so purple can't be nine now right ah so purple it so this is a Yes, this is a purple seven combination, isn't it? Because purple and seven are in different cells of box three. So that actually, we can get rid of that seven pencil mark. So seven is in one of these and purple is in the other one. Okay, this Right, I've, I've now understood the part. I've now understood that cell is the key. That is weird. <laughs> That's absolutely weird. But this square, this square is purple, isn't it? Because purple, purple, that can't be purple. It was a nice move away from itself. So purple is in those two cells. Immediately, we get this little two by two of purples. We should be asking where is purple in column three because it can't be in those six cells. So purple in column three is right at the bottom in one of these three cells. But the logic is totally symmetrical. Where does purple go in box number nine? Well, it can't be a knight's move away from itself. So it's down here. So uh, we don't know that this is a purple seven pair because we don't know whether the seven goes here or not. But, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Purple is down here. And from box eight's perspective, again, purple can't be in those cells or here because of knight's move Sudoku. So purple has to be there in this two by two, which allows us to ask the question, where's purple in row seven? And the answer to that is not in any of those cells. So purple has to be simultaneously in one of those three cells from column from row seven's perspective and one of these three cells from column three's perspective well the only cell that meets those criteria is this one and now we now know that this purple digit cannot be a seven because if it was a seven there would be two sevens in box three so that is an eight and that's 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 a six, and that's a six, but a doka, and this is a one, two, three, triple, and we are off to the races. That's really strange. So let me just think about this for a second. I'm just, um, I just want to pause and make sure I understand this. So that's telling us that, that is telling us that in any knight's move Sudoku, Yes, yes, this is what it's telling us. So this is telling us that in any knight's move Sudoku, if you can, if there is an equivalence, i.e. if there is the same digit between the central cell 
and any of the two any of these cells then you can always write in the sort of the figure on the opposite diagonal let me just duplicate the tab here and show you what I mean um, so let's reset the puzzle so in any puzzle where we we learn the Nate if these two in any Knight's move Sudoku sorry where these two are the same you can immediately say that that is the same digit and because of symmetry of course this would work if you knew those two were the same then you would know that digit was the same if you knew these two were the sorry those two were the same you'd know that was the same that's beautiful. So that that is the theorema, is it Van the theorema Van Thoen? Well, that's yeah, that's worth a theory. Um, now this square can't be six or eight now. So that's seven or nine. If it's nine, it's got to be two, three, four because it can't be six, one, two. Now. But have we actually so that oh I see so six is in one of those two cells and six is in one of these two cells that's seven seeing that seven by knight's move which I didn't notice before so seven is in one of two places now how do we take this forward though eight we know that eight is now um, the equivalent digit with the seven over here so now we know we've not put four and five in this row so this is a four five pair that means you can't put four or five in these cells eight is in one of these two cells eight's in one of these two cells ah no i keep wanting to make this a seven eight pair but it needn't be because of this silly cell oh no 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 no, okay, well now I need to prove Fistimafel. Because if I prove Fistimafel, I can show this is a 7, can't I? Because I, I said before, there's a 7 in one of those two cells, because this, this is in a 2x2 two two in the corner. Ah, right. Right, let's do that then. Let's do it, let me do it quickly. Um, so how do we prove that these 2x2s two contain the same digits as this ring the way to do it the simplest way I know of doing it is to think about Scrabble tiles and let's look at row three now row three what's what's the nature of row three row three contains all of the digits from one to nine once each if we fill it in correctly let's assume we do so that's what row three contains what does row seven contain well it contains the same thing what does box four contain? Well, it contains the same thing, the digits one to nine once each. Box six, the same, the digits one to nine once each. So I want to imagine that for each of these 36 digits that I've just highlighted, we write them on a, one each on a Scrabble tile and we put them in an orange bag. Bear with me on this. And so if we think about what our orange bag has now got in it, it's got 36 Scrabble tiles four of which will contain the digit one, four of which will contain the digits two, etc., all the way up to four having the digit eight on them and four having the digit nine on them. So that is one collection of Scrabble tiles that we have made for ourselves. And now I want to make another, a different bag of Scrabble tiles. This time I'm going to make it a blue bag of tiles and I'm going to have all of the digits in column one of a Sudoku in it. Assume this is com correctly completed. So that's the digits one to nine once each. I want to have that column, that column, and the final column as well. So now my blue bag of Scrabble tiles will also have 36 tiles on it, and its tiles will be made up of four tiles with the digit one, because there's gonna be one one in this column, one one in this column, one one in this column, and one one in this column. Four tiles with the digit two, for the same reason, four tiles with the digit three, all the way through to four tiles with the digit nine. So at the moment, we can say that my blue bag and my orange bag contain identical sets of Scrabble tiles. So what would happen? Let's say this digit was a three. Let's say I go into my, my bags of Scrabble tiles and I find a three in the orange bag 
and I find the three in the blue bag and I take one of those tiles that says three, one of those tiles that says three from the orange bag, one that says three from the blue bag, and I throw them out of both bags. What has happened as a result of that, apart from the bags have got very slightly lighter? Well, the key point to realize is because the bags had the same sets of tiles in before I did this, and I've thrown the same number out of both bags, the 35 tiles left in each bag are still the same. And that's important because that I can repeat that exercise for all digits in the puzzle that have two colors, which means I can throw away all of these 20 tiles from both bags. And if I do that, the, tile, the contents of each bag will still be the same because I've removed the identical things from them both. And they had the identical things in them to start with. And there you go. The Fistemafel ring proved. These 16 cells are the same digits as the 16 cells in the corner. Isn't that amazing? So, sorry, I know some of you already knew that, but this is important for this puzzle because I have to, because this is in a two by two around the edge, it must appear in the ring. It can't appear on an arrow. So its only remaining cell is there. And that's interesting that we've got a six, seven, eight, nine in the circles. Now this seven must have a one, four on its arrow. One in row six now. Can't go in these cells, can't go in those cells. So must go in one of those three cells. One must be on the eight arrow. And that leads to a little trick about this cell. Because is it possible that neither of those cells contains a one? Well, the answer is no. Because if you did have the ones in this arrangement across boxes five and eight, then if the one was here and the one was here, which is one possible arrangement of the ones, these are a knight's move apart and that breaks the puzzle. And the only other configuration is like that and like that, and that still breaks the puzzle. They're still a knight's move apart. And so that tells us that one of these cells must be a one. So that one is not a one. Now, now this arrow here, this arrow here is a, it is, I know it's a one, two, five arrow. And I know it's a one, two, five arrow for, because of another Sudoku theorem, this time potato heads theorem. There's probably a very simple way of telling that this is one, two, five. Let me just think, uh, is it? Um, let me just think about this for a second or two. Um, hmm. I'm not doing very well at proving this, am I? Oh, oh, but look, maybe I don't need to. I might come back to this, but I've just noticed I managed to get an eight down here. Oh, but I've got no seven. Oh, the seven's here now, so that doesn't, I was about to say I've got seven, eight pair there, but I don't because the seven's here. That's totally useless. Ah, where does seven go in box six? Not there anymore. That's a knight's move away from itself. So that's a seven and that must be a six now. Six is the blue digit. So that's definitely not a blue digit. So six, oh, I see. So it's, oh, actually I'll blue this six as well. So it, it's not feeling left out. Seven has to be in one of those three cells in box number five, because this seven sees that cell as well as these by Sudoku. These squares have got to be three, five and nine. And this one can't be five, because if this is a five, you can't put a five in either of those cells. So this is three or nine. Um, oh, I really want to prove this. I don't, I don't think, well, do I think we have to or not? I don't know whether we have to or not. So uh, I'm going to hold off on it for a moment. Let me think about this. Oh, why can't I do it? Simon! Uh, oh, you know what I could do? I could use the fives. 
Yes, well, it's the simple question actually is where does 5 go in that column? 5 must be on top of the 8, naughty 5. So this is a 5 8 pair which might not be resolved though. So what are those digits at the top? They are three and nine. Oh, whoops, I want to put those in the center. So this is a three nine pair. So nine in this box now cannot be in this domino. So nine is in one of three positions. This nine doesn't see any of those, unfortunately. We've got a one two pair in box three to complete this box. Yes, okay, now we can now look at box one. We've got a one two pair there and a one two pair there looking at box one, so that's a one two pair. So we might have to color the ones and twos, that might be where this is heading towards. Si oh, six, where does six now go in this box? And the answer is I don't know, except it's definitely in that domino, which means that's no longer able to be six. So that loses its blueness and this acquires blueness. Um, and that shifts the nine over here. So nine in the middle box has to be in one of three places, I want to say. Six can't go on the arrow. So six is right down at the bottom of column five. How many sixes have we got? The answer is five. Oh, yeah, six has got to be at the... Oh, that's nice. Yeah, okay, so look. Six can't go here because of the knight's move. So six is in this domino, but six is in this domino as well. So we can't put six in any of those cells, which places six in row seven because six can't go here, but it would be a knight's move away from there. So six goes in the corner and doesn't get a song. Now that means those squares are threes, fours, and fives. And that means... Uh, seven, seven in this column has to be down here. Hmm. Oh, I'm just going to tell you the potato head thing then. Um, I'm not going to put it in, but just, just some of you may be wondering how I know this is one, two, five. And the reason for that is that in any knight's move Sudoku, you the maximum number of digits that cannot appear in the Fistimafel ring is one. And that's, well, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to show you why, um, because I want to. Now, so let's imagine that there is a digit in this puzzle that, that is not in the Fistimafel ring. If it's not in the Fistimafel ring, then it's also obviously not in the blue cells, because that's what we proved before. So the question we should ask ourselves, if that is the case, is where does that digit go in boxes one, three, seven, and nine? And the answer is in one of these dominoes. We don't know which one, one of those dominoes, one of these dominoes, one of these dominoes. Now, in order to understand the implications of this, let's think about, let's just imagine this cell was the digit that is not in the ring. In, in box number one. It doesn't matter which of these four we pick because the logic is totally symmetrical because of how the grid is, how, how these boxes are completely symmetrical by reference to this logic. Because this being yellow, what does that do? Well, it puts a yellow into one of the, those, it puts a yellow into one of those, it puts a one, yellow into one of these. And you could totally see how if this wasn't the yellow and this was the yellow instead, all that would do is shift the yellow positions into their counter dominoes. So it doesn't change the logic, it just shifts the digits around slightly. But the key thing to realize now is that we can now restrict the yellow digit by reference to the even number boxes. Because where can the yellow go in this box? Well, given it's not in the Fistimafel ring, that's, that's where we started, it can't be in those cells because it, either of these cells would rule it out of this one. So it has to be in one of those. So let's make that yellow. So yellow has to be in one of these. In this box, it can't be here because it would rule itself out of there. So it has to be in one of those. In this box, it's the same. It's got to be in one of these. In this box, it's the same. It's got to be in one of these. And now, where do you put it in column five? And the answer is it's not in those three and it's not in these three. So it's in one of those. Where do you put it in row five? Well, the answer is it's not in those or this or these. 
So it's in one of those. And the only cell that meets both of that cri those criteria is that one. So you end up with any digit that is not in the Fistimafel ring in a Knight's Move Sudoku has to be here. And Potato Head discovered this. It's unbelievable. Now, why does this? Why is this interesting? Well, in this puzzle, well, let's ask a few more questions. What would happen if there were two digits that weren't in the ring then? Well, they'd both have to go here. This would simultaneously have to contain both digits. So that's clearly nonsense. So in any Knight's Move Sudoku, there is exactly one digit only that could not be in the ring. And there might be no digits. And in this puzzle, there are no digits because look, right at the start, we've got this palindrome, which puts the central cell into a two by two box in the corner. So in this particular puzzle, there must be all nine digits in the ring. And that's how, going back here, I knew there had to be a five in here because there is no five in any of those cells. <laughs> so the only place for a five is there. And therefore that must be one, two and five. Um, sorry, I know I've just wasted some of your time, but that's what I wanted to show you. Um, in fact, I'm going to put that in because I can now see that that cell's not a two because of Knight's move Sudoku. No, 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 no. Um, now, what does that mean? These squares here have got to be threes, fours and nines to complete the row. And that, right, that's interesting. Whatever this digit is, will rule itself out of this domino. So that digit is the same as that digit in this puzzle, which is a strange thing to note. So that's not a four, therefore. So this, these are the same. Wow, so green is in one of those two. Oh no, I thought we were gonna get it, but then we've also got a nine in the circle. So we don't ne necessarily know that this is a nine. Oh, that was very nearly exciting. I'm thinking the other thing I was wondering about was coloring the ones and the twos. I can see how I can disambiguate these. Can we? Oh, not quite. I don't see how to disambiguate those ones. Ah, oh, Simon, 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 Simon. Right, sorry, there's a simple point here, which is far less complicated than colouring, which is where does two go in column five of this grid? Because it's not there, because we've got one, two pairs looking at these cells. It could be there, and indeed, I think it is. It can't be here, because if it was a two there, it rules a two off the line. It can't be here by Sudoku. It can't be there. And these two squares, there's a two in one of those cells. So it's not in any of these three. So two in this column, I think goes here, which means these two squares are a one, three pair. Now, does that do anything for us? Yes, okay, that, no, that does. Because that breaches our one, two pair here. So that must be one, that must be two, and this will reach in there, and that must be two, and that must be one. And that can't be one anymore by Sudoku. This one sees this digit, one, four. That four sees the four, five pair. So that five, four goes in. That's five by Sudoku now. Um, this cell can't be one because it sees its friend here. So has that helped us? Y yeah, yes. In fact, look, a simple question is where does one go in box? Yeah, where does one go in box five? It's got to go there. It's the only cell that's legitimate for it. So it now can't go here. So one goes here. One goes here by Sudoku. Three goes here by Sudoku. That reaches into box three. So that's three. That's nine. That fixes nine in box two. Good grief. Okay, now what are those squares? They are fours, fives, and sevens. And I'm desperately trying to see if something's ruled out of any of those. Um, 
I don't know, but I've seen something easier. Where does two go in box five now? It can't be a knight's move from itself, so it's got to go here. Which places two here and five here by Sudoku. That's beautiful, because now we should ask where five goes in the middle box. And it can't go there because of knight's move. So it has to go here, where it's... So that makes that a nine, if I trust my pencil marks. And you know me. <laughs> so, oh, this is all getting resolved. Um... This five is giving me a five up there. So that's a five. This is four and seven. This is five. This is a three, four pair. So that means that's a seven. That's a four. Four must be in one of these two cells in box number. Box number one now. Oh, not box number one. Box number five. Oh, seven must be here because of this seven. So that's seven. That's four. That must be three. That's three. That's nine. Oh, good grief. Um, now, what about... Oh, ooh, oh, no, it's all right. I was about to get very concerned that I'd managed to invent a deadly pattern of um, that would be unresolvable about whether this was double seven here or double seven here. But look, there's a seven looking into this deadly pattern and the knight's move tells us the order. So that's got to be eight, that's eight, that's seven, that's seven. These two squares here are a three, four pair, which looks like it might be interesting in a minute in column two. And those squares are fives and nines. And there's a nine here, so that's got to be five, that's got to be nine. Now in this column, we've not put in one and nine. Okay, yeah, so that's three, that's three, that's four, that's three, that's four, that's four, that's nine. That's nine, so that's nine, that's one. This column needs two and, no, not two and six, two and five. And I don't think there's anything reaching in there by knight's move. And those squares have got to be a four, seven combination. I don't think there's anything reaching in there by knight's move. So what about here? We've got three, oh, no, we've got three and four. Uh, no. Okay, what about this one? Seven and eight. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that seven is seeing that square. So that must go around this way. So that goes around that way. And we've just got ones, twos, and three. Oh, so this is a three naked single. This is a one, a one two pair, and it's resolved by um, Knight's move. Look, this two reaches in. So one, two, one, two, this three, three, four, four, seven. Done. Yay! <laughs> That's magnificent. That's an absolute exploration of Sudoku theorems. I do not know. Well, did I need Potato Head's theorem? I think I I did need Fistemafel's theorem to give me this seven. That was lovely. There may have been an easy way of getting it, but that, that's how I got that. Did I need the Potato Head thing to give me a one, two, five, triple there? or not. I can't remember. If I hadn't known this... No, I think that is useful actually, because if I hadn't known that, how would I have got the 2 in column 5? I couldn't have ruled a 2 out of those two squares, because this could have been 1, 3, 4 at that point. Yeah, so I'm going to say this is the three, a 3 theorem Sudoku puzzle. So it's got Elements of Fistemafel, elements of Potato Head, and also the Theorema van Thoen, which is really rather remarkable. <laughs> loved that. I absolutely loved it. I hope you enjoyed it too. Do let me know in the comments. Do enjoy the piece of music that I must remember to add on to the video now by Pim. Uh, thanks to Pim. Thanks to Ards. Well, thanks to both Ards, probably. And um, yeah, we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.
several borders in its row, which is a maximum of five colours. very 